15 minutes of playing time left. Steve Zabriskie and Ron Pitts with you from Norman, Oklahoma, where the Sooners lead it 20 to 7 over the Texas A&M Aggies. And the third quarter really belonged to A&M. They got a turnover from the Sooners to get their only touchdown after being held on a goal line stand. And as we start the fourth, Oklahoma has the ball again. Third down and four at the A&M 40. A&M jumping and Oklahoma snapping the ball very alertly. Chuck Langston, the center, snapped the ball. But we'll see if the Aggies were drawn off or not. Always have to have the obligatory officials conference on this one. Uh, I got to say that's to me that looks like all A&M. And that's a call. John Laurie confirms that the Aggies jumped off were not drawn off. And the five yard penalty will give Oklahoma another first down this time at the A&M 35. And a frustrating day for this group right here. But they came back and made it statistically a little closer with a strong third quarter. Well, the, the stat that jumps out to me anyway is the uh, time of possession. A&M is caught up. And now got 20 minutes total to OU's 24 before the, before the half ended. <laughs> it was looking dim for a and as far as possession. But A&M has got to get the ball back. Oklahoma now with the first and 10 at the 35. Collier. Collier running very hard inside the 25 for yet another first down. Antonio Shorter on the stop. Let's go down again on the sidelines to Dean Blevin. Guys, Watson Brown is Oklahoma's first-year offensive coordinator. He's on the field the first time in Oklahoma modern era that an offensive coordinator has been on the field. He waggles in the play. We'll get a shot of it here. He's down the field about 40 yards, so this isn't a great look. But he will waggle the plays into Kale Gundy. He loves being down here because he can feel the game. He can holler at his quarterback. He has had an emphatic impact on this Oklahoma offense. Thank you, Dean. The other thing I think that's good about that is we've seen a number of shots of he and Gary Gibbs standing together and talking, and that's got to help to some degree. Yeah, well, when things go bad, Gibbs knows where to go. Holly <laughs> with a big run for another first down, and this is Thomas. Allen. James Allen picking his way. Made the most with what he had. And get short yardage on first down. Lance Tackleman, the nose guard on the stop. I don't know if you saw it, but I kind of saw some shades of Joe Washington right there for a split second, the way he bounced off and cut back. And he does Ooh. have a similar running style, James Allen does, to little Joe of about 20 years ago here at Oklahoma. Feet wide apart. Low center of gravity and extreme quickness. Extreme quickness. Very deceptive, too. He doesn't look as quick as he actually is. Because I see a lot of good football players out there missing on tackle. Dwayne Chandler, number 32, in at fullback. He is the long setback behind Gundy on second down. And a pitch to Chandler. Well, I guess it was not to Chandler, it was to Allen. Although, I don't know. Allen picked it up on the bounce. They got some quick penetration that time that forced Gundy to maybe pitch a little bit earlier than he wanted to. But regardless of that, OU's got to settle down now. They got to understand what's happening. You got 13 minutes and running in the last quarter. You're up 20 to 7. You know, hold on to that football. Get a field goal. Once again, make these people work. They mark it at the 23, so it'll be third and nine. 13 minutes left in the game. DJ Mills comes in at wide receiver. Gundy completes to Mills who took it away. DJ Mills down to the two. Donovan Greer nearly had an interception and somehow Mills came up with the ball. Inside man to man, he's up on about five yards. Not bad coverage here. This ball should have been intercepted. I'm surprised Gundy threw it. This ball should be going the other way. It went right through his hands. Good job of Mills keeping his eye on it. Makes Hendricks miss, and he's up the field getting ready to score. And you saw Watson Brown on the sidelines there. I think he's going crazy because don't throw that ball to that wide side of the field like that when you've got that much air. Either throw it on the line hard for it soon or don't put that much air under that ball. Right if it hadn't been for a great play by Mills, Oklahoma would not be down here threatening to get Gundy scores. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I think he made up for that, uh, <laughs> that almost interception. That was a great move, too. Great, great fake on the option. Hale Gundy has done a better job today running the option than at any time in his career at Oklahoma. They got a full house backfield. You can see right here, he's going to option the DB. I don't know. I don't know. I would have gone for that one. <laughs> well, he committed to the pitch man, and Gundy saw it and appropriately cut it upfield for the touchdown. Blanton with another extra point. 12 minutes and 19 seconds left to play in the game. Oklahoma now back to a 20-point lead as Gary Gibbs and company lead 27 to 7. Hey, Hendricks, he's got the pitch man. He's okay, but the problem is Greer, the freshman, he takes the pitch man too. Gundy puts a nice move on him. Goes right up the field, touchdown. That cat a 64-yard drive in nine plays. And just when the AM wrecking crew defense needed to stop an OU drive, they again were unable to do so. And Oklahoma 27 to 7. As Blanton will kick it off to Leland McElroy and Typo McMullen. This time Scott Blanton will be kicking into that strong win. And he drives it. Still out of the end zone. What a leg on Scott Blanton. It's amazing. This guy does everything, too. He kicks off, he, you know, he turns, he does all that, still gets it out of there. I'll tell you what, the kicking game, Ron, has been a big part of this game today in addition to the field position, but then generally the kicking game leads to field position. Well, Coach Gibbs, he leaned back in his chair real slow and looked up into the air when, when I asked him about kicking game. And he said, special teams-wise, Ron, we're going to have to make something. And they've got to change a quarterback here. Tommy and Preston, him. the sophomore out of College Station, is in at quarterback, replacing Corey Pollock. Thomas, breaking tackles and getting free. Rodney Thomas had one man to beat. He broke that tackle, but Beavers finally hauls him down. You know, I was just getting ready to say, has RC conceded this game by putting Preston in? A 46-yard run by Rodney Thomas. That'll hold up against any pass play. Oh, boy, I tell you. I got to attribute it to just bad tackling. They get some good blocks right there. Right there, they don't wrap up. They don't wrap up. They don't wrap up here. And he's still running. This guy's only 200 pounds, but he sometimes runs like he's about 230. Leland McElroy cannot get away from Mario Freeman. Good open field tackle that time by Freeman. A lot of air for McElroy to, to get around. He just faces it up. Gets, gets him on the ground. Preston is 6'3 and 215 pounds. He played a little bit, as you see, last week, completing two of three for only six yards. Looked a little bit shaky last week. I was surprised when he got in there late in the game. I don't know how much uh, RC will want to pass with him, you know? They just want to keep running the football. They have second down and 10 at the Oklahoma 34. Preston passing, McElroy in the flat, has the first down. Dragged down at about the 22 by Aubrey Beavers. Let's go down again to Dean Blevins. Guys, the A&M offensive coach is telling your linemen to pick up the pace. Now, one factor here to keep in mind, we'll take a look at the OU sideline. Now, for the first time since 1972, OU is on the west side. They're in the shaded area right now. And I can guarantee you, as we pan over and take a look at the A&M side, in the sun, it is much hotter. Might be a factor. Back to you guys. Thank you, Dean. In the shadows are the Sooner. It is warm down there, to say the least. First and 10, A&M. McElroy cutting it back inside the 20 to about the 19. Dragged down by David Campbell. And Terrell Peters. One thing OU can't do, they can't think that this kid can't throw the football because he can, and he can also run. Rodney Thomas back in at tailback. Slocum has A&M on the move. Do they have enough time? Under ten and a half minutes to play. Second down and eight. Thomas, big hole. Inside the ten. First down and about the eight. Larry Bush and John McGee making the tackle in the secondary. They brought Tyrell Peters that time on an inside stunt. 
He ran over the fullback, almost made the tackle. But, you know, if he doesn't get there, then that lane is wide open. I'll tell you what, this, this is Rodney Thomas's quarter. He's now carried 20 times for 104 yards and has been the main man here in the fourth. First and goal. Fullback, Gross. Gross breaks the tackle and is down near the two. Well, we heard from Dean Blevins that that offensive line has been told to pick it up a notch. They certainly have in this drive. The ball came loose. It would appear that A&M has retained possession. Cliff Gross may have recovered his own fumble. And they're ruling he was down before the ball came out. The ground, in this case, the artificial turf, <laughs> cannot cause a fumble. Darius Johnson's going to argue he's one of the defensive co-captains. But the ball remains in the possession of AM. It is second and goal. And tight ends are in. Timeout. Now the officials just said, wait a minute, we have to reset and start the clock. So they made AM go back to the huddle. Second and goal from the two. Short play and Keenan, three tight ends for the Aggies. Rodney Thomas trying to run off tackle, and there's Mario Freeman again. Terrell Peters also in on the play. Boy, Mario Freeman's all over this. So I don't know what kind of you know, expectations they had of him coming into this game, but you're going to see him right now at the inside linebacker position. He's just running through people. Fighting through traffic, making plays. He's all over the field today. After Rodney Thomas was dragged down by Mario Freeman, 280-pound David Campbell fell on top of him. Third down and goal, and now it's back near the three. Thomas again. He has the corner touchdown. Hayward Clay, one of the reserve tight ends, with a fine block to spring Rodney Thomas free. And Thomas, the main man in this entire drive, scores the touchdown. You're going to see Shankle come up field right now, try to force something. He gets glanced, which is not what you want to do. Then DeQuazy is just getting blocked one-on-one. -on -one. You're going to see him right back in the end zone there. No outside support. Anderson can't get over there in time for the touchdown. Terry Venatuli is in to attempt the extra point. And it is good. We have eight minutes and 46 seconds remaining in the football game. AM is back in it. It's 27 to 14, Oklahoma. Stands here at OU on an average day. They sell tons of hot dogs, 50 tons of ice, and look at that soda. On a day like today, they're probably going to do even more than that. Well, even though those guys are fortunate enough to be in the shade, it looks like they've gone through some concessions. I'll tell you what, I know some players down there that have probably gone through a little bit of water, too. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's just hot down there. They worked hard all week to, to keep the water in them and, and to keep in good shape, but you know how that is. Come game day, you're putting it all.